Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's video we're going to do some Windows deployment service. We're going to do a very basic setup. We're just going to get the ice the installation on the server, get some ISOs up there, and just show you how quickly how, you know, it'll go ahead and work and process everything. Okay? So, I'm just going to give you a heads up here. There's my Windows, you know, 2019 server. This is a file sharing server. Um, I do have my Active Directory as well as this. You should have an Active Directory and a domain connected to this um, while you're doing it, at least for my video. Um, it does have a standalone server, so you're more than welcome to do that as well if you feel comfortable proceeding in that direction. Okay, and also I do want to let everybody know if you do create a virtual, please create a secondary hard drive for this um, because if you don't, you'll get you'll be greeted with a not more of an error, but a disclaimer saying you should install it onto here and so on and so forth. Um, so best practices, never put anything in your OS drive, put it on a secondary drive. Um, second best practices, do not put this on your Active Directory. It can be installed in your Active Directory, but I don't recommend installing anything on your Active Directory except for AD, DNS, THCP, and the occasional VPN. Okay, so with all the quick disclaimers out of the way and everything, let's get this show rolling. Add, add roles and features. Okay, make sure you click the right server. Scroll down to the bottom and click Windows Deployment. Go ahead and click Add Features. Click Next. Next again. Okay, right here, they're just gonna give you a quick little disclaimer about how Windows Deployment Services work and we don't really care. Okay, because we know how it works. It deploys Windows. Sounds pretty simple. Make sure you get the Deployment Server and Transport Server up and running and click Next. Okay, and then go ahead and click install. <clears throat> you should not have to require to reboot. <clears throat> now, while this is doing this, we're gonna skip over here to our file explorer. And on our secondary drive, the storage drive that we created, okay, we're gonna create a folder called ISOs. And we're gonna copy all our ISOs into here. Okay, and then we're gonna create another folder called WDS, okay. Now, if you don't know how to get your ISOs from your main computer onto your virtual, you can either drag and drop them from the desktop over, or as I like to do with all my computers, is I go to Settings, Options, Shared Folders, Always Enable, Map as a Network Drive, and then you go ahead and map a folder from your server. So in my case being, I have mine added here which would be my virtual machines, where all my virtual machines are saved, and I create a folder called shared. And inside there, I would copy all that into here, click next and add it. Okay, so from there, we have our ISOs, we have this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize that for now. You should be greeted by now with installation succeeded. Click close. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the install for it. So go ahead and click tools, Windows Deployment Services. And then what I like to do here too is I like to pin that to the taskbar, especially if that's what this main thing is gonna be doing on this server is deployment services and everything, so I can just get right to it. Um, if you're more comfortable, you can always put it right here too as it's, it seems like it's already there. Okay, it is. Okay, so go to servers, click on your server, and click configure. Now, okay, pre-requirements are you should be a member of the Active Directory or a standalone. So in our case, we're going to be a part of the ADDS. We do have a DHCP server on the network and we do have a DNS server on the network. And we also have a NTFS file system, which means we have Windows on there. So as long as you got a Windows computer with DHCP, DNS, AD, it can be all the same server, but that's just not the best practices. You are ready to click next. I'm going to integrate with my Active Directory. Now here, this is where I created the secondary folder on storage called WDS. Now here's a reason for it. When you click next, okay, it's telling you here that you should not put it on your C drive, which makes sense. You should never put it on your C drive. So in my case, storage, WDS, call it a day. Now here we got is how you want to handle your Pixie server. All right, you can, most people can do respond to only known clients respond to all clients or respond to all clients and require administrator approval. Okay, so from this case being, we're going to respond to all clients and computers and we're going to, in my case, I'm going to do require administrator approval for unknown computers. 
okay you do not have to check this off if you just want to go quickly install the iso when you're there doing it then you would just go ahead and uncheck this so click next and we're just going to go ahead and wait about 30 seconds now it says add images to the server now i'm going to uncheck that and click finish okay now to give you a little idea of what you're looking at right here i'll go ahead and drop down that tree as well make this a little bit bigger install images very basic information it is where it, all your installing images for Windows are going to be. Now, this could be your Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, 10, server, 20, two, server 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, 2019, and whatever else is going to come in the future. Pending devices. That is the section where when you click on that checkbox that I said to do. So let me go here to properties. So, okay, I'm pretty sure I did that before, but that's okay. So require administrator approval, okay? So where is this depending devices node in here? You have to make sure if I'm gonna go in, so I'll have to click okay to that. <clears throat> okay, so go ahead and click that. And multicast transmission means that if you're going to broadcast to say 10 or 15, 20, 100 computers, um, whatever your really major situation is, um, you can actually create your images to cast out to multiple people. Um, also multicast, you can make it, you know, start at a certain time or start with a certain amount of devices. So say you're installing five computers, all with the same images from the same ISO you want and you wanna do them all pretty much relatively quick without having to go back and forth, you would set them all up. You would set multicast up to be able to allow up to five. And once the fifth computer registers under pending devices, then it'll go ahead and do the install on, across all of them at once. And then the same thing with drivers. Drivers is if you need specialty drivers for certain servers or computers, you would put them in here under the names of them. So I'll just click on drivers. So in here, I would say RAID card. You know, we'll just click, we'll, I'll add a card that's called RAID card. You know, in here, this is where you're going to add all your, you know, driver files, which I don't actually have any, just to kind of give you the idea. Okay. So in this case being, all your RAID card drivers will be in there depending on the computers. Um, but we're not going to go over that today because it's all virtual. We can't actually really care any for that. So I've done enough talking again. Let's get this thing on the road here. Go down to your file explorer, open up your ISOs, and I'm gonna start with my server, but you can pick any one you want. Right click and click mount. Okay, so now you can see that it's actually added to it. That's perfect. Anyway, click back. So first we're gonna start in boot images. Right click, add boot image. Now remember, this is where you, your file has to have boot.wim or install.wim. If it has install.esd, you're gonna have to convert that to a wim. Okay, and I'm not gonna unfortunately show that how to do that in this video. Um, that may be for a future video. Click on your DVD drive, sources, and click on boot.wim. Click next. And then Microsoft Windows Setup is x64 is in here, and that's perfect. Um, to give you a disclaimer as well, if you're going to do 32-bit installs, you have to get a 32-bit boot image and install that onto here. Okay, but for the majority of the people of the world, we're gonna do 64-bit. Click next, next, and then about 20 seconds, you'll be ready to go, or less than that. Perfect. Okay, now, again, if you're going to do certain things like that when you right click on them you get your properties disable replace export so if you have the image here and you say you deleted it and you need it export the image tell it where you want it to go okay same thing replace the image if you want to replace this boot you know with something else that's you know, maybe this became corrupt and you have to fix it go ahead and can replace it okay properties gives you a little more information on the boot.wim information for you and my favorite part is disable when you turn disable on Okay, this means that this boot section will not work. So if you are the type of person that runs multiple different boots or multiple different versions of Windows, like 64-bit and 32-bit, okay, you're gonna have to go ahead and, you know, obviously disable or re-enable your, you know, your boot images. Now over here to install images. First thing we're gonna do is add install group, and I'm gonna call it server 2019. Now, 
every version of Windows you install, you have to make an install group. Do not, I repeat, do not put them all in the same file or the same group. You're gonna get errors and image errors. So again, I have two. So Win 10 Enterprise will be my second one. And you could add more. So I can add another one, I'll just call, I'll just say Win 7. There you go. So I have, I can put Windows 7 in here, Windows 10, Windows Server. So click on Windows Server 2019. I right, click Install Image. This is where the install.wim comes from. Click Browse. Again, go to your DVD, Sources, Install.wim. It's usually the largest file in there. Click Open and then click Next. Now, these things are not labeled very easily to remember. Now, again, I can look at this, say it's Windows Server 2018 Server Standard Core. Server Standard. Standard, I'm sorry, Server Data Center Core. Okay, but when you're installing these on certain computers, you may not see the core part or anything else. It may only go up to the, like for example, on Standard, it may get to the R. So you won't see the D core. And this one, you won't see that. So how would you know between the two? You wouldn't. So we're gonna rename this. Go down here, click checkbox to use default and click next. Now, make sure whatever you call it is whatever you wanna call it. So the image name and the image description, I usually keep them the same. So in my case, win 2K19, that's what it is, standard, which is what it is, okay, core. Perfect. So go ahead and do the whole thing with that. Next. Go ahead, and I know this one's standard, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just do this. And just get rid of the word core. Next. And now we're at data center. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just change STD to data. Okay. And then the final one here, same thing. Just get rid of core. Hit next, next. And then we're gonna wait about 30 seconds for everything to finish installing. <clears throat> okay, now if you're just gonna do Windows or server and that you can stop at that point. Um, in my case, I'm also gonna add my Windows 10 Enterprise as well. Okay. So we just gotta wait a few more seconds. And there we go, and that's it. So then you can see they're all here. Okay, so you have your cores and you have your standards and that. Now, again, just like the boot images, if you're consistently only installing, we'll say standard and standard core, you're not doing data, right click and disable it. Okay, if you're having other people on your network, um, you know, other IT technicians, they might be starting off and not really familiar with this. Um, you do not want them to be able to install the wrong one, I guess, or not know the difference between data and standard or whatever it may be. So the best way of doing it is that if you're the admin, upload every image you're gonna use, upload the unattended files, get this all ready, and then just quickly go in here and start enabling, disabling certain different images for your, you know, for your people. So I'm just gonna go ahead and re-enable them for the moment because when I boot later, I want everybody to see that. So we're gonna add another image. Whoops. Well, before I do that, I'm gonna to have to disconnect that one and then go ahead and mount the other enterprise. And then go back over here and we're just gonna go ahead and add that again. Next. This one I will leave as default. I know at Windows 10 Enterprise, even if I can't see 2019, I know LTSC is different from the LT, LTSB that they used to have okay, which is 2016, but in the case being, I'm only putting one version of Windows on there, or one version of Windows Desktop on there. Okay, and then 20 seconds later, or 10 seconds, whatever it is, this will be ready to go. Okay. And like I can tell everybody, I always like to do everything in real time. So while we're working on this, you're seeing this exactly as, so if I get an error, you're gonna get the same error as we go along with this. There's no ma camera magic as I call it. Okay, now it's been added. Go ahead and click finish and there it is. 
So I have my server, my Windows, that one. And as you can see, I don't have anything in here, but that doesn't matter. And that's it. That's all you need to do for the actual server here to get this thing up and running and ready to go. So now the next thing I'm going to show you is the pending devices, which let me go ahead and make sure. Okay, the checkbox is there still. All right, so we're going to have the pending devices we're going to show you and how Pixie will work on the new server or the new you know, virtual. So in this case being here, I want to power it on, but I don't want to power it up. I want it to go to firmware, which is also the BIOS. Okay. <clears throat> so in this case being, I want to go ahead and start over the network. Go ahead and press enter when it prompts you to. And as you can see here, there is the IP address and it's right here booting the boot.wim image that we uploaded. Okay, we're just going to keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay, now as you can see it looks very similar to it. All right, but it's going to be a little bit different once we get into it. So you can see here we have our English keyboard, choose whatever you need. In this case being, you're going to have to type in your domain and username for this. So, I'm going to go ahead and log in as my administrator. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And as you can see here, here are all of our installs. So I'm going to go ahead and click the one I want, the Enterprise. Okay, probably should have done this earlier, but it is what it is. All right, so here's your clean version. We dumped everything, so it's completely unformatted, new. Reformat it so it's completely blank. So again, no camera trickery. And all you gotta do is click next. And that's it. Okay. And under here in pending devices, the reason why it actually skipped the authorization for it is because I actually logged in as the administrator. So if I would have logged in as a different user, um, it would have prompted me to wait for the administrator to click on pending devices and go from there. So kind of forgot about that when I did this, but it is what it is. And that's it. And when, and when this is all said and done, you can go ahead and just do your basic out-of-box experience and you're all ready to go. So you successfully installed a you know, Windows you know, deployment server on your Windows Server 2019. So I do hope this was informative to some people like this. Um, I, like I said, in my next video, I'll go in a little more detail with it. And I hope everybody has a pleasant night tonight. So enjoy.